Hello everyone. Today I'm going to be talking about the products from Sephora that I think are the best bets for people with mature and sensitive skin. So the Sephora sale starts on April 5th for people who are the Rouge members and then for everyone else the sale will start on April 9th. So I thought that what I would do is just uh, pick out the brands from Sephora that I do like and go down in alphabetical order and then for each brand let you know which products are my favorites. In addition, for those brands that I've purchased any new products recently, then I will let you know what I think of those products. And in a few cases, I'm thinking about picking up some things myself, so I will let you know about that as well. And I don't really have good enough light today, I don't think, to do really good swatches, so I think that I will just talk about the products, and when I have done previous videos demonstrating the products, I will direct you back to those. But as always, I will be inserting slides with information on the ingredients for each product so that you can get a better sense of whether or not particular products might be appropriate for you. So first a little bit of information about me. I'm 59 years old and I have dry and sensitive skin and I usually only spend about five or ten minutes a day uh, working on my makeup. So I want to look uh, nicer but I don't necessarily want to look made up except maybe to be wearing a little bit of lipstick or eyeshadow. So I'm going for a pretty casual makeup style. And over the past three years, I've tried more than a thousand makeup products and a thousand skincare products. And so I do have a pretty good basis of comparison for everything new that I try. And one thing that I have found is that there are certain ingredients that always do irritate my skin. And I know that those ingredients tend to be irritating for many other people as well. So I just don't talk about products with those ingredients here on this channel. Now what I have found is that there are an awfully lot of products at Sephora that uh, do not qualify in terms of not having those ingredients. Even the products that are marked as clean at Sephora, a lot of them have synthetic fragrances in them, a lot of them have aluminum powder in them, or they may have other ingredients in them that I find to be problematic. So therefore I spent a lot of time looking at ingredient lists for uh, all, pretty much all of the makeup products and a great percentage of the uh, skincare products from Sephora, trying to figure out which products might be appropriate. Because just because something's not marked as clean at Sephora doesn't mean it's not appropriate. And certainly I've found an awfully lot of clean at Sephora products that have any problematic ingredients or also that I haven't been able to tolerate once I did try the products. And of the products that do meet my criteria, I've actually tried out a really large percentage of them either here at home or at the store. And so I feel like I do have a pretty good sense of what's going on in that store and what kinds of things might be most appropriate for people who do have really sensitive skin like mine. So what I'm about to give you is a really curated list of products that I have really honed in on as being really good for me, both in terms of performance and in terms of not being irritating. And I have used all of these products quite a lot, so I feel like I have a good sense of how they perform over time as well. So this is not a sponsored video, and I have not gotten any of these products for free in PR, but I do have affiliate links for Sephora, so if you were to click on those links and then eventually make a purchase, then I might get a small percentage of the proceeds from that. So if you were to uh, decide to do that, that would be really great because then it would really help my channel a lot. So let's start with uh, the A's, and this is Alpine Beauty. So this is a skincare product company that is based in Jackson Hole, Wyoming. And a lot of their products do have a little bit of a fragrance type ingredients or botanical type ingredients in them. So I don't always do as well with those products, but they do have a few products that don't have any kind of a scent in them that I feel really good about and that I have really enjoyed using and that I've purchased a couple times. So the newest product from them is the Super Peptide and Ghostberry Barrier Repair Cream. Uh, this is a totally unscented product that is supposed to be okay for people with eczema. And I have really liked this quite a lot. I think that it's been a very nourishing for my skin over the winter and it hasn't irritated my skin at all. Another product that I've purchased several containers of is the 
uh, Plant Genius Line Filling Eye Balm. So this is a really nice eye balm. It has caffeine in it and bakuchiol in it. So caffeine is good for depuffing and the bakuchiol is supposed to be good for wrinkles and to act kind of like retinol. And I think that this has been uh, really fine for me to use in my eye areas. I haven't had any problems with it. And I do think that of the eye creams that I have used, this is one of my very favorites and I've purchased several containers of this. And then here's a container that I just used up, which is the Wild Nettle and Niacinamide Firming Serum. So this is basically a hyaluronic acid serum, but it has some other ingredients in it. And I think that this has been very nice, and I believe that I have another container of this somewhere. And so if I repurchase things like this, I really do like them a lot. And so I think that I can recommend this one pretty highly also. And then brand new from Alpine Beauty is a product that is called the Instant Bright Eye Dark Circle Firming Cream. So this uh, has a little bit of a tint to it, a kind of a peach tint that is supposed to help cover over the darkness. And it's also supposed to act to uh, counteract the uh, darkness in terms of giving your skin uh, good ingredients. So I feel okay about this based on the ingredient list. So I'm going to give that one a try too. And the next one is Armani, and Armani is a company that uh, is owned by L'Oreal, and I had not found anything that I really liked from that company until very recently when I did my lipstick video, and I decided to splurge on one of their lipsticks, and I really, really like it. And I ended up buying both the matte version and the uh, satin version, and among, these are among my favorite lipsticks that I used in my recent lipstick video. So one thing I like about this is that it has a an interesting shaped bullet that I think does a nice job of uh, allowing you to trace easily around the contours of your lips but I also like the way that this tasted it doesn't have any scent or flavoring in it at all I like the way that it felt on my lips I felt like both the matte version and the satin version were very wearable they were not drying from my lips and I think the colors looked really good on me so I am a big fan of these lipsticks and I have one satin one and one matte one and they are very pricey and I'm trying to restrain myself in terms of buying more of them but I'm a big fan of these lipsticks now. Now a new product that is available at, from Armani that is at Sephora is the uh, Prisma Glass Hydrating Lip Gloss with Squalane and that one does not have any uh, problematic ingredients in it as far as I'm concerned. So I do want to give that a try now that I've had a good experience with these lipsticks. The other product that Armani has just released, although it's not available at Sephora, is a bronzer and that is available I believe just through Nordstrom or maybe it's just available through Nordstrom right now. I actually um, took a chance. I looked at the ingredient list. It looked okay. So I actually purchased the two lightest shades in that bronzer just to be able to demonstrate. So what I want to do uh, as soon as the light gets better is to do a bronzing uh, video where I uh, swatch a lot of different bronzers next to one another. And so that we can try to figure out what the differences in color are so that people can find the right bronzers for their undertones. So I will be having that come up next. So I'm keeping my fingers crossed that the bronzers are as good as the lipsticks. Another video that I have coming up very f soon is one on Augustinus Botter. So last year, uh, exactly one year ago, I decided that I was going to do a little experiment by buying this Augustinus Botter cream and then just using it on one half of my face and seeing if it uh, actually made a difference and if we could tell. I wasn't really planning for the uh, experiment to go on for the whole year, but I think it's time to take stock and then for me either to give up on this product or to continue on using it on both sides of my face. So if you want to think right now about which side of my face looks better and let me know in the comments section, then that would be fine. Otherwise, I'll watch for this video and I will let you know uh, what, what's going on in terms of the Augustinus Botter. But I did uh, spend last year uh, using this every single day. Another thing that I've been doing recently is trying to find some sunscreens that uh, do not contain what are called sunscreen boosters. So chemicals like butyloctyl salicylate, tridecyl salicylate, and ethyl ferulate, those are actually are basically exactly the same as chemical sunscreens, but they have not been approved by the FDA and a lot of companies that make so-called mineral sunscreens or mineral uh, SPF foundations, they throw 
throw these chemicals in there and I realize that's one reason why, men, why mineral sunscreens have been so irritating for me. So I'm trying to find some products that actually don't have those chemicals in them. So I just did a, a video on that. And a couple of the ones that I think uh, are good contenders, I've tried the Complexion Rescue from Bare Minerals before, and that uh, seemed to be okay for me. And uh, Bare Minerals has another uh, product out that is called the Original Serum Foundation, something like that. And that is another product that I have purchased, but that I am planning to give a try. So I will report back on that at some point soon. Now, Biosance is a company that uses squalene in really almost all of their products. And the reason that it's called Biosance, I think, is because it's genetically engineered or bioengineered uh, squalene, which is made from uh, microbes that are fermenting, I think, sugarcane. And so that made me a little bit nervous at first, but I think that really most of the squalane that we're seeing in products are, are coming from this kind of bioengineering now. And I finally did try some of these products, and there are a couple products that I actually do really like. Uh, one of those is the squalane plus omega repair cream. This is a nice rich cream that I've enjoyed using in the winter months. And uh, also the squalane plus probiotic gel moisturizer is a lighter, uh, kind of an oil-free type of a cream that I also thing has been very nice. Now so far I've just managed to get a lot of these little smaller containers through the website for Biosense and they've had a lot of pretty good offers on there. So I wouldn't necessarily uh, suggest buying these products from Sephora. I would take a good look at the Biosense website but I do like these products and I'm pretty picky about skincare so that was a little bit of a surprise to me. Now, most of the products that are from Bobbi Brown are not ones that I can use for one reason or another, but there are a few products from that company that I really, really do like. So one of them I've talked about a number of times on this channel, which is their uh, corrector stick, and it is very similar, in my opinion, to the Jones Road stick, except that it comes in this twist-up container. It's a little softer. It's easier to blend, and I like it a whole lot, and I've used this I used up this whole stick and I purchased at least one more. I might have two more in reserve. And I uh, believe that I will continue to use this for a long time in the future. It's done very well for me. In addition, they make very similar concealers, and I do have one of these concealers. I feel like there's a lot more competition in terms of other good concealers on the market, but this is a fine concealer, and I've gotten a lot of use out of that as well. And the shade that I have in this is called Warm uh, Ivory. Now another product that I really like that is from Bobbi Brown is their foundation stick. So this is not quite as... Uh, highly uh, creamy and saturated is the concealer stick. So you can use it more generally all over the face, but I often also use it just as like a concealer. And it comes in a bunch of different shades. Not all of the shades are available from Sephora, so I would check into that before buying. But I think this is a really nice product, and I really think of the foundation sticks that I have tried, this one is by far the best. I think it's a whole lot better, for instance, than the Westman Atelier one, and it has not irritated my skin at all. So I've been really um, kind of impressed with this, and I don't really see anyone talk about it. And meanwhile, people are talking about other foundation sticks that are on the market, but this is the one that I like the most so far. Now, I am a big fan of eyeshadow sticks as long as they are well made, and Bobbi Brown does make uh, some very good eyeshadow sticks. I had been concerned about these sticks for quite a while because they do list aluminum powder on the May Contain list, and I uh, finally got Bobbi Brown to tell me uh, at least some of the shades in terms of whether or not they have aluminum powder in them. And when I asked them about a whole list of them, they, they got back to me and they said none of those have aluminum powder in them. So I don't know if the rest of them do. They're a little, it's a little hard to get them to give information on every single shade. I think I'm going to wait a little bit longer and ask them again. But I will put here on the screen a list of the eyeshadows that they say do not have aluminum powder in them. And and I feel really good about that because otherwise I really like these eyeshadows. So I like uh, feeling more free to use them and uh, not worrying about that because I know that aluminum powder does irritate my eyes really consistently. 
Next we have Calaray, and I am a really big fan of two of the products from Calaray. One is their mascara, which is a tubing mascara. I have found that that uh, does a really nice job in terms of darkening my eyelashes and just making them look a little bit more full, but not really fake. And it goes on really easily, and it comes off really easily with warm water, and it hasn't irritated my eyes at all. And in terms of all of the mascaras that I have used, I really do like this one very very, very much. I'm also really happy that it comes in this small tube, which I think you can buy for $13. And I've managed to collect a whole bunch of them as a gift with purchase as well. But I think that uh, it's really important for me to be able to get a reasonably priced mascara in a small tube like this, because I've been trying to make an effort to only use mascaras for a month or two and then to switch them out because I got an eye infection from a mascara recently. And then Calaray also sells my favorite eyeliner pencils. So they just have three shades. They have this one, which is kind of a, a turquoise type of a shade, a little greenish and a little bluish. And then they have a brown one and a black one. And I think this performs really well. I have had so many problems with eyeliners, irritating my eyes or not going on smoothly or disappearing right away or not coming off easily that I'm really happy about this one. This one has been really terrific for me. And it's one of the very few that I've found that I like. It's also very similar to the Laura Mercier eyeliners. And so that's another option. And it's also very similar to the Rowan ones, but those are really the only eyeliners that I really like very much. Now for Charlotte Tilbury, I have spent a lot of time looking at ingredient lists for Charlotte Tilbury and trying on products in the store and at home, and some of their products are okay, and some of them are not. But the only ones that I feel are really, really good are these um, beauty blush wands. So I have this one, which is a matte one, and I have this in the color Pillow Talk, and then I have this one, which is uh, the highlighter type one, but it's almost like a blush, and I have this one in the color Pink Gasm. And I think that these are both really nice. I think that they uh, look really natural, and they, they blend into my skin really easily, and they also stay on my skin really nicely. So my skin has a habit of eating blush, and it just oftentimes products like these especially disappear very fast on my skin. And so these two products, I don't feel like that's been the case, and I think that these colors are really pretty. They do come in some other colors. I don't feel like those have been as good for me, but uh, it really depends on what kind of skin you have. But I do really like these products. And I have not found any problems with the mechanisms. They've worked fine for me. I haven't tried that many products from Danessa Myricks, but I did really like her Yummy Skin Skin Tint. Uh, that is a product that I was a little skeptical about because it has propylene glycol in it, which I'm suspicious about. And it's also made in China. I think all of her makeup is made in China. But I did give that a try just because I heard other people really liked it. And I thought it worked fine for me. It didn't cause any irritation and I thought it looked really pretty. And so I will link to a video that I did on that. That. The products that people seem to be talking about right now from Danessa Myricks are the groundwork palettes. So there's a brown one that was released a while back, and now there's a new pink one. Uh, I am not sure that those are appropriate for me either in terms of the colors that are in the palettes. They look kind of saturated. And I've also heard that they're a little bit difficult to actually use, and I'm not a makeup expert, so I'm not sure I want my life to be more difficult in terms of figuring out how to use those palettes but they are popular enough that I would be interested in experimenting with them a little bit. Okay, so next is Drunk Elephant, and I tried a lot of Drunk Elephant products, really almost everything that they offer. I started a while back, and then I realized that I didn't do all that well with a lot of them, but then more recently I was thinking about putting together a video on whether or not uh, any of the Drunk Elephant products are actually good uh, ideas for, t for tweens because there is so much publicity on that. And so I've done a lot of trial of uh, Drunk Elephant products and there are really only two products from them so far that I actually like. One is this little lip 
Lippy Balm, which is a, a very nice lip balm. I was really surprised considering uh, the issues that I had with the other products. And the other is one of their newest products, which is called the Bora Barrier uh, Rich Cream. And that one I got a sample of, and I really, really liked it. And then actually bought a full container, which I hardly ever do. Usually I'm not motivated, especially when things are kind of overpriced the way the drug elephant products are but i do really like that one and it doesn't have any fragrance in it i do feel like it was very good for my skin in terms of uh, the moisturizing benefits of it and especially over the winter i think it's been a good thing another line of products that people talk about around the sephora seal times are the dyson products so the air wraps and the hair dryers and other kinds of uh, hair straighteners and other kinds of hair gadgets and then there are some other companies on the sephora site that also are uh, also often discussed I looked into this uh, a while back and I concluded that what I really needed was something that I could do a little bit of styling to my shorter hair, but it without damaging it. And when I looked into it from that angle, the product that I decided to get is called the Zuvi Halo. So this is a um, hair dryer that uh, uses light technology as well as mild heat to dry your hair. And my feeling was that, especially as I've gotten older, that my hair has just gotten so dry and it's become so fragile that what I really needed to focus on was on uh, protecting my hair and not causing it stress. So that's why I decided to buy this and I looked at a lot of reviews in a lot of different places. And I've been using this for six months or so, I think, and I actually really like it. I think that uh, I didn't used to uh, usually even dry my hair most of the time, but uh, when you have a channel like this, then you have to start thinking about more about like hair. And what I have found is that over the, the past year or so, I think that my hair quality has gotten much better actually. And a lot of that has to do with putting in uh, good quality oils and letting it sit on there for 15 minutes or maybe longer before shampooing. And I do that every time I shampoo now. And I think that that has helped my hair so much. So I think that my hair was just really, really deficient in oil. And I think that also using uh, milder types of uh, shampoos and conditioners and things like that have been good for me. I feel like I especially like the Lola V brand, which is from Jennifer Aniston that is available on Credo. But I also think that this hair dryer has been a very nice thing. And I think that it has uh, actually helped me to do a little bit of styling of my hair and I don't think it's been damaging at all. So I have, uh, if I were going to uh, recommend something to people with really delicate hair like mine, this is the one that I would pick based on my own experiences and on what I found by trying to uh, look into this a bit more. And this product is not available on Sephora. I think it's mostly just available on the Zuvi website. And so the regular price for this is $350, but right now they have, uh, it's $264 plus $15 for the diffuser. And I think that might be about what I paid. And I do think that if I compare this to the regular old ordinary cheap hair dryers that I used in the past. I do feel like this dries my hair just as quickly, but I don't think that it gets nearly as hot and it doesn't seem to be nearly as hard on my hair. So I think that the light technology in this actually does do something. So next we have Fashion Fair, and for most of the products that Fashion Fair offers, they don't have skin tones that are light enough for me, and so therefore I haven't been able to use most of their products. But I really like their primer a whole lot. That is actually, in terms of silicone type primers, that is actually my favorite primer, uh, pretty much by far of everything that I have tried. And I also do like their lipsticks. Again, these are, most of the colors for these are, are probably inappropriate for me. They tend to be very bright and very saturated, but I do really like the formula. And so if you're looking for lipsticks that are more saturated like that, then this is a good brand to look at. A skincare brand that I've been hearing a lot about is called Alimis, I think it is called, but pretty much everything from that brand seems to have fragrance in it, except that they have one product that is called the Pro Collagen Naked Makeup Melting Cleansing Balm, which sounds a lot like maybe the pharmacy cleansing balm that I really like, but it's a little more expensive. It's $69 uh, without any discount. So I thought that it would be worth it just to give it a try, just because this seems to be a brand at the moment. 
And then next is Glossier, and Glossier is a brand that there are some products, mostly the ones that have been released recently, that I really, really like. And then there are some others that I really don't like at all, but I do think that they are moving in the right direction. One of my very favorite lipsticks is the Glossier Ultra Lip. So this is a sheer lip balm. Uh, it has a clear base to it, but it also, some of the colors are really bright, and I think that this feels great on my lips. And I've had some of these shades for a couple years and they still are going fine for me. They haven't uh, got, gone bad or anything. And I feel really good about this and they're a really good price uh, for a lipstick that's as high of a quality. They feel good on my lips. And there's something that I feel like I can wear all the time. And then if they fall apart, I can buy another one in the same shade. And I have all of the colors of these and I do use them quite frequently. So I highly recommend those. I have long really liked the cloud paint blushes from uh, Glossier. I like those because they are very sheer and I feel like even if I take a color, a shade of blush that I usually wouldn't be able to wear because it's the wrong undertone, that I can still usually wear and it'll just give me a little bit of a hint of that color and then I can build it up if I want. And they uh, do look really pretty on my, my cheeks and they're very easy to work with. I think that that's probably also the case with these new cloud paint bronzers. They are basically seem to be the same formula and they do have uh, that see-through quality to them. I feel like this shade, which is the lightest one, uh, which is called Sail. I'm not sure this is a great color for me. I think it's a little bit too gray maybe and not peach enough to really be a, an excellent a bronzer for me and I'm not sure if any of the other colors would be better. So when I go to Sephora, I will take another look. I do want to include this in my bronzer video so as a comparison. Uh, so, so far I haven't been really using this one too much, but I think that if you can pick one that's the right color for your skin, it could be a really nice product. And the other product that I think is worth mentioning from Glossier is the Perfecting Skin Tint. So this is a very, very sheer skin tint and it is silicone based. And I think that of the people that really like that product, uh, pe women who are getting older seem to be really enthusiastic about it. So I think it just gives a very nice finish to the skin without uh, doing anything to make it look like a you have foundation settling in your wrinkles or anything like that. And I have, feel like I really uh, do look really good every time I use this product. And when I do it on camera, I'm kind of really surprised at how much better I look. So that is a product that you might consider if you want something uh, with very little coverage, but that will improve the texture of your skin. Another company that interests me is Guerlain, the creative director for that a brand is uh, Violette Serrat, who is the head of her own brand, Violette FR. And the only product that I don't think has perfume in it are the eyeshadow quads, and all of those seem to be okay in terms of the ingredient lists. I'm not seeing aluminum powder or anything that concerns me. I do have one of these. It's very expensive. And I think that, again, I need to do a video where I show this. Uh, I've think for these uh, eyeshadow quads that the real issue with them is that they're very highly pigmented and they, that makes them really difficult for me to work with. But if you are someone that doesn't mind that, if you either have darker skin or you like a more uh, flamboyant eyeshadow look, or if you are better at working with eyeshadows than I am, then I think these are quality products and uh, some of the color stories that they have are kind of interesting looking. Now I just did a whole video on House Labs where I talked about every single product that they make. So if you're interested in that brand, then I suggest taking a look at that video maybe. Of the products that they have, the ones that I feel really enthusiastic about, uh, the, the most recent introduction for them are these blushes. So they used to have blushes, but they uh, redid them. They put them in slightly different packaging and they introduced some new colors. I think these blushes are very highly pigmented, so that makes it a little bit difficult for me to work with on my fair skin, but they are really lovely blushes, very creamy, and I can actually put them on with my fingers even though they're powder blush and then blend them in. And they are really a joy to work with. If they would make some that are not quite so pigmented, then I would use them all the time. And even though they're really more pigmented than I really want, I still think that they're so much such a nice formula that it makes me want to uh, go to a little trouble to use them from time to time anyway. 
Another recent introduction from House Labs are these lip glazes. These come in, uh, I think, six different shades, and I really do like the the way that these look on my lips, and I think they feel good. They have some different kinds of peptides in them, and those are supposed to be good for your lips and plumping over time. I think that they have been fine for my lips, and uh, of the, the recent lip releases, and there have been so many of them, of the recent lip releases that uh, have come out, I really think this is the one that I am leaning to in terms of liking the most of the ones that I've tried. I'm also a really big fan of the bronzers from House Labs. I really like the formula of them. And there's 12 different shades, and so if you go to Sephora, you hopefully will be able to find the right undertone for you if you uh, experiment a little bit and try on a few different shades. Because I do think it's really important to have the right undertone and the right uh, level of pigment in a bronzer. And uh, most companies don't really offer that many bronzers. And this is also a really, really good formula. So of all the bronzers in the market, this uh, probably is my favorite at this point. The House Labs Foundation, this is actually one of my favorite foundations, or at least as far as silicone type foundations go, I really like this one. It goes on very thin, and I think it looks uh, quite natural on my skin, and it, I really like the finish of it. Uh, this House Labs Concealer, I don't think it's a good under eye concealer for me because it uh, does emphasize my texture more than I would like, but I do think it works very nice on my eyelids as an eyelid primer, and it probably is my favorite product that I've tried so far for priming my eyelids before I put on uh, like powder eyeshadows. And so I uh, feel really good about that. And uh, I sometimes use it on other areas of my face other than my under eyes uh, where I don't have really bad wrinkles. And it doesn't do too badly for that. But as an eyelid primer, I really, really like it. And then of lipsticks, actually, these are among my favorite lipsticks of all. These are the Le Monster Lip Crayons, and I think they perform really well for me in terms of being able to draw on a nice lip, but also fill it in. It's very velvety. It doesn't feel dry on my lips, but it does give a little bit of a matte look. They come in a bunch of different colors, and they're really a reasonable price. Now, Hourglass is another one of those brands where there's an awfully lot of products that have ingredient lists that have really problematic ingredients in them that I uh, certainly cannot tolerate. And then there are a lot of newer products that I do think are okay for me. So I do have a number of Hourglass products that I have been experimenting with, and I do think I need to make some time to do a full Hourglass video. But the products that I know that I feel really good about are, first of all, the Hourglass Skin Tint that was released last year. I think that of the skin tints that are on the market that perform like serious foundations, but that don't uh, provide quite as much thick coverage, I think that that's a very nice one. I think they did a nice job with that. And then they also have a phantom glossy uh, lipstick that's sort of like lip balm, and I think that's a very nice product too. Now, I have tried uh, pretty much all of the older products from Ilia, and I think that all of them sort of perform adequately, but I wasn't really impressed with any of them. But I do really like this new product from Ilia, which is called the Base Face Milk. It's a, it's a creamy type of a product, but it doesn't have much oil in it. It's mostly like uh, sodium hyaluronate, and it's a liquid. And I feel like this actually does serve nicely as a primer, and then if I put it on my skin in the morning, that it does give some good hydration without it feeling greasy. And if I put on a product over it that is uh, likely to be slightly irritating to my skin, such as a sunscreen that I know has uh, some kind of an irritating ingredient in it, if it's not too problematic uh, of an ingredient, then this actually makes it a lot better. And I, my skin definitely doesn't get as annoyed by it. So I think this it would be easy to overlook this in terms of it actually being a primer. Like, what kind of a primer would this be? But I, I feel like for me, it's actually quite a good one. Ilia also has a mascara that is called Limitless Lash, and that one also comes in a small trial size type of a container for around $13 again, and I think that's a fairly well-performing mascara also. I think that I prefer the tubing mascaras, but that's a pretty good mascara. I used one uh, recently, and I thought that it worked fine for me. Ilia also recently introduced a complexion stick, and so I do want to try that one out. I'll compare it to the other complexion sticks that I have. So I will hopefully be able to talk about that for you soon. Kaja is a Korean brand, 
and it mostly seems to have fragrance in all of their products so I have not been interested in them for that but they do make these little eye bentos that uh, come three in a little stack and uh, I was really surprised at how much I have liked these I think that they perform really well they go on really easily the the colors are really pretty I have a couple of different ones of these and they're not really expensive and I think they're kind of cute I do uh, need to bring up that they have talc in them. Uh, that would be concerning for some people, possibly. But I haven't found them to be irritating at all. And in terms of eyeshadows with talc in them, unless it's a formula that I think is stirring up a lot of dust that I might breathe in because it could be contaminated with asbestos, I just haven't worried a whole lot about talc in eyeshadows. And these, I don't think, have uh, stirred up any dust at all. So I just don't think I'm breathing the the talc into my lungs. So I, so far I feel okay about using this occasionally. I don't use it all the time. I have tried every single product that Kosas has sold over the past three years, and I did a video on that recently. There are a few products from Kosas that I use on a regular basis and that I actually do rebuy. Uh, the one of them that I think I might rebuy in this uh, sale is this Brow Pop. I think this Brow Pop may be three years old, and I'm not sure it's performing as well as it did when I first got it, but it's still going strong. So I think it's time, maybe time to buy a new replacement for this one. And then there's also a uh, brow gel that goes with this that are, it's in the same colors and I really like that as well. I purchased a couple of those over the years and they seem to hold up really well. And I really like the Kosas Cloud Set Powder that again has lasted me forever and I have used it a lot. It's really my default powder because it will really work with almost any foundation that I put it on over or on its own. And I think it's very pretty on my face. So I think all of those are really, really good products. I also do like the Kosas deodorant, so I have bought a couple of bottles of that as well. Another really popular product from Kosas that I have also enjoyed is the Kosas Revealer Concealer, and I've bought a couple of tubes of that over time. I think I actually like the House Labs one a bit more, and the six-month usage life is uh, something that's not as big of a deal because they do sell uh, some small tubes and some, some of the shades. So I think that that is a good product as well. So now we're at L, and so we're at Laura Mercier. And there are a couple of products from Laura Mercier that I really do like very much. Uh, the first ones, uh, as I said, I'm an eyeshadow stick fan, and I think that they make very, very good eyeshadow sticks. Uh, what's particularly good about them is that they list the ingredients for each shade, and as far as I can tell, none of them have aluminum powder in them at this point. But if you're concerned, as I am concerned, then you can look at the ingredient list and make sure. And I think that these have performed really well for me. I've never had any problems with any of these at all. These new ones are matte and they're only supposed to have a six month usage life but they seem to be going strong so I've been really happy about that. And they also have the older versions and I think that these have all been terrific for me. I really do like the formula a lot. I do really like the Victoria Beckham eyeshadow sticks but I did have one totally fall apart on me. It's like it totally got all dried up and I hadn't even used it that much. So I'm not sure if I trust the formulas for those as much as I do these Laura, uh, Laura Mercier ones or the Bobbi Brown ones. But those, some of those Victoria Beckham colors certainly are very, very pretty. Another product that they released last year, as I said, is the uh, eye um, pencils. And I think this performs almost exactly the same as the calorie ones. It seems to be from the same factory. And I'm really happy about that because it has expanded the color range of the eye pencils that I have to choose from. And I think that this one is called some kind of a bronze uh, type of a color. I think it's been really pretty on me. And uh, I'll probably buy a few more of these. I really like it. And then the other product that I really like from this company is the Real Flawless Luminous Perfecting Pressed Powder. That's way too many words. This is in Translucent Honey. This has just a little tiny bit of a shimmer to it, but it's a talc-free powder. And I think the tiny little bit of shimmer in this is actually really attractive on my skin. I think it, it doesn't look like I have a highlighter all over my face. It just gives a little bit of like a finishing type of a powder. 
And so I have really enjoyed this and uh, I've had it for I think a year now and it's worked really well for me. It is a little bit pricey, but I would definitely recommend uh, thinking about this or at least taking a look at it. Laura Mercier released a concealer earlier this winter and I tried it at the store and I thought that it was seemed like it might be okay so I might pick that up as well and actually give it a try. So another thing that I really am still very enthusiastic about from Laura Mercier, probably the most enthusiastic of anything that they have made, is an eyeshadow palette that is called Japan in Bloom. And this is not available from Sephora. You can only get it on the Laura Mercier website. It is a small compact little uh, eyeshadow palette that's about the same size as my iPhone but it has I think eight colors in it and they are all really beautiful colors and very soft and wedding type colors and I think it performs really well in terms of going on and staying on and looking nice and it only costs thirty dollars and the case is really cute and I think that this has been highly overlooked. It gets really good reviews on the Laura Mercier site. And so I would suggest giving that a look. It did come back into stock. And I did a, a full video on mostly on that eyeshadow palette because I liked it so much. So I am glad it's still around. Now Lion Pose, I just found their new sunscreen on the Sephora site and this turns out that it is a brand new company and I was really impressed with the ingredient lists and what I realized when I looked at their website is that they actually are uh, partially run by dermatologists that have a connection to Harvard and that does kind of make sense to me because some of the dermatology professors from Harvard Medical School uh, were the people that uh, wrote the paper that I have been relying on in terms of uh, these issues with these sunscreen boosters, butyloctyl salicylate and some of the others. So I think that this company seems to be in part designed to create safe sunscreens uh, that will perform well but that will not have any of these sunscreen type boosters in them. And I think that it looks like I should be able to tolerate that and so I'm keeping my fingers crossed. So I will buy that one during the sale and uh, see how it goes. In theory, the reason that it's called Ghostbusters is because it is not nano zinc, but it is supposed to uh, still not uh, look white on your skin. So we will see if it works for that as well as uh, in other ways. Now Makeup by Mario, they have one of my favorite foundations, which is the Surreal Skin. So this is a foundation that is fairly uh, oily and it uh, gives what my skin, what appears to be like a little bit of um, padding to it. So it looks like I kind of have more fat volume on my face and therefore that my face is a little more plump and a little bit prettier. And I do think that it looks very nice. I think it's very similar in that respect to the uh, Jones Road of uh, what the foundation product, but that product has essential oils in that I have been finding really irritating. Whereas the Makeup by Mario one has been fine. The only issue with the Makeup by Mario one is that I don't feel like they have enough shades, at least on the light end. And so if I want a decent match, I really have to mix two colors together. And that's a little annoying. So I wish they would introduce more shades in that product. Their new product is the Neutral Matte Palette. And I am you know, if I had a different skin tone, I think that, that is kind of a pretty palette, but I think that it's the kind of palette that looks like it's very highly pigmented. And what I have found is that when I use highly pigmented eyeshadows like that, that uh, they get run away with me too fast and that I end up looking really crazy. Now the palette from Makeup by Mario that I do really like is the Ethereal Eyes one and that one does not seem to be at Sephora at present but I do see that it is still in stock on the Makeup by Mario website and so that is one that I would consider uh, thinking about before it totally goes away and that is again one of those products that I really need to wait until I have a nice sunny day and do a demonstration of it uh, just for the sake of doing it since I do have it and I do like it. LYS is a company I've just tried two products from them so far but I think I should try more. The ones that I've tried so far are the lip liner which I thought was okay and this lipstick which I also really liked but what I realized has a very small amount of product in it and so what I said in my lipstick video is that I thought that $27 was really expensive for that amount of 
product. And now when I look on the Sephora website, it is listed as being $20. And that seems to be a much more reasonable price. And then with a discount, then it would be even more reasonable. So if that is the case, then I think that even if, though there is only this much lipstick in this container, and I think you could use it up really fast, it might be worth it because it actually is a very nice formula. It goes on uh, very moisturizing and it looks really pretty. And uh, it's not a bad formula at all. It's made in Taiwan, which is, seems to be a, a new place where makeup is being made. And they did a really nice job with it. It just shouldn't cost $27. Now, Merit is a company I really like almost everything that they have offered. I think that the one product that I would not suggest is their highlighting stick because that uh, has some ingredient in it that tends to go rancid really quickly, like well under a year. And so that is something that's very frustrating for me when something goes bad that quickly and that consistently. I've heard a lot of different people on YouTube talk about that happening to them and apparently independently from one another. So I wouldn't get that one, but really everything else that Merit offers, I think are really good products. I really uh, do like these new lipsticks, the matte ones. I am wearing that today, actually. I am wearing the shade Sunday, and I think that really all of the colors for them are pretty. Uh, do I like it as much as the Lisa Elridge True Velvet lipsticks? I think I like the Lisa Eldridge ones more, but I haven't had any of these break yet, and with the Lisa Eldridge ones, I'm kind of afraid that they're going to break. So the Lisa Eldridge ones have uh, really remarkably good colors, and these are also very nice colors, and they feel really good, and I think they look really pretty. So I do like these, and then I also like the original satin versions of the lipsticks. I have used those many, many times, and I have all of the colors in the satin ones and the matte ones now. And so I, I think that of the uh, releases for this year, I think that these matte lipsticks have been really terrific. I really like their foundation stick. I don't feel like they have a really great match for me in terms of the skin tone, but I think it's a high performing enough product that I can just put it on anyway and blend it in and it always looks fine. I am also a, a fan of their uh, blush balms. They are a very uh, kind of uh, thin and uh, they have like a clear base. So they're a little bit like the Glossier Cloud Paints in terms of uh, giving a, a really sheer wash of color that uh, you do see the color, but it, it blends really naturally into the skin. And I think that's very nice. And then this product I think has basically the same function as that Ilia uh, face base milk. And uh, it's a, it seems so thin that how could it possibly do anything? But I really like the way it feels on my skin. And I think again, it serves a, a, a fairly nice, uh, function as a primer on my skin. Another product from them that I like are the eyeshadows, but I really don't like them very much when they're used as eyeshadows. I really only like them if they are used as eyeliners. And I like their little brush number two because that works very well as an eyeliner brush uh, to use with those eyeshadows. And I think that of the eyeliners that I have used, this may be at the very top of the heap because it goes on really easily and it stays in place really well. And I think that the fact that they don't have a black one is not bothersome to me. Maybe it would be good if they introduced a black one, but in general, I think that of my eyeliner choices, that one has been one of the best. Now, NARS is a company that has never said that they were becoming a clean beauty company, and everything that they have done has been really quiet, but it is very clear to me that they are making a very conscientious and a very smart uh, approach to doing this because everything that they have come out with since the beginning of 2022 has been really good in both the, the ingredient list and in terms of how well it has worked for me. All of the products have functioned really well and none of them have been irritating for my skin at all. So I really am impressed with this company. They, all of their older products are so problematic for my skin that I was never able to wear them at all. And I still have to be careful about uh, looking at the ingredient lists or finding out when things are released. But uh, they really have become my favorite clean beauty company. And the most recent thing that they brought out was a reformulation of their blushes. So they took out the talc and they took out a few other uh, problematic ingredients. And I did get uh, a couple shades of these new blushes and I think that they have been really terrific. Some of the shades uh, 
from the old blushes were replaced by new shades, including there's one, um, you know, I just recently got out my old orgasm blush and I really was kind of thinking that it looks kind of dated in terms of, you know, the, all that gold shimmer in it. But now they have one that is called Orgasm uh, Edge, which I think is a new color and I think this is supposed to be exactly like the Orgasm original one, except without that shimmer in it. And I really like it. I find that this is actually a really, really good color for me. And I have not found all that many other companies that offer a color like this. Now the other products from NARS that I really like, first of all, there are three different lip formulas and I think that all of those are really terrific. The first one is their matte lipsticks. They're called Power Matte. These are lipsticks that go on uh, somewhat creamy but then dry down and then they stay on your lips for a really long time. So I think that there are times when that is a good thing and this does come in a lot of really gorgeous colors. I have found that if I put this on over my MAC Prep Plus Prime product that it uh, feels comfortable on my lips. It doesn't feel like it's too drying. And then sometimes I will put on a lip balm over the top of them. And the one that I like for that is the Isamaya lip balms and uh, that works really well too. So in general if, the, if I really want a serious lipstick that I'm not going to have to worry about it coming off right away then this is the one that I really like. For a lip product that I think is a very similar but that is not going to dry out your lips and that you can wear comfortably without a primer on it. I would suggest these uh, very poorly named NARS lip pencils. This is really not a lip pencil anyway. It is really a lip crayon and it looks an awfully lot like a lipstick when you put it on. So I would uh, suggest that for people that think that this lipstick is too dry for them. And then uh, they have a lipstick that is um, one of those balmy type lipsticks in the tall containers that are a little bit like the hourglass ones. This one doesn't have any flavor in it. And it also is, uh, some of the shades are highly pigmented and I think some of the shades are really pretty and they do feel really good on my lips. They're a little bit messy in some of these shades in terms of how they look, but it's not too bad. And I really do like this formula also. And then the other products that they've released uh, that I like, I like their Light Reflecting Foundation. That one is a little bit thick for me and it is a little bit drying. But what I have found is that if I mix that with a little bit of a moisturizer, um, and the moisturizer that I usually pick is this one from the outset, which I want to talk about also. If I mix that with the NARS Light Reflecting Foundation, then I think it makes a very nice tinted moisturizer that looks really, really pretty on my skin. But if you're looking for one that's a little bit uh, less hydrating and that gives a little bit more coverage, then you can certainly use that straight out of the bottle as well and I think it's a very nice formula. I am also a fan of the NARS eyeshadows. Some of those do have talc in them but again I don't think that's necessarily an issue. Probably they'll take the talc out in some of their future releases. The one that I have here for instance is called the NARS Orgasm Rising and I think that these are really pretty colors for me. The one that they have currently on Sephora, that one looks a little bit dark for me I think and it also looks like the color story is kind of similar to this one so I don't know that I need to buy another one myself. But in general NARS has made a number of different eyeshadow palettes over the past three years and I think that all of those are terrific and I have several of them and I uh, feel like especially for what they are charging I think these are really excellent eyeshadow uh, in terms of how they look and how they perform and I feel really very nice about them. And then also I will put on the screen here a list of the eyeshadows that I would suggest would be okay as far as I'm concerned. And I would suggest taking a look at the NARS site because some of them are on the last chance type page and I think that some of those may be a much better deal than you're getting at Sephora. NARS last year also released some talc free uh, bronzers and those are actually very nice bronzers also. I especially like the fact that some of those are available in smaller sizes so you can give them a try just as some of those blushes are available in smaller sizes. Not in the smaller size but uh, still of interest to some people they have a shade of bronzer that is considerably lighter than almost any that I have tried so that could be one to uh, take a look at as well. 
Now last year Nards also released some liquid blushes and these I think are just gorgeous colors and I also think that this is a perfectly fine way to dispense blush like that. I don't think it needs to be in the Charlotte Tilbury type of a dispenser but uh, the thing about this formula is that it didn't seem to really last very long on my cheeks even when I use darker colors and that is something that I heard from other people too that this is a blush that is especially likely to disappear so maybe try that one in advance before you decide if you want it to see if it, it's going to hold up for you I uh, really love putting this blush on still but it, it really does disappear I think it really needs to go on over another blush for me to uh, feel confident about wearing it now next is uh, Natasha Denona and Natasha Denona is mostly seems to be known for her eyeshadow palettes and in the past most of those eyeshadow palettes did have aluminum powder in them so I was avoiding them but recently there have been several that have come out that don't have aluminum powders in them uh, that when these little tiny palettes which is actually fine with me because I feel like uh, I kind of get overwhelmed when I have a palette that's too large anyway and this one doesn't take up much room and I think these have all performed really well for me and they don't have any aluminum powder in them and I think the colors are really pretty so the ones that I have this is the mini starlet palette and I really really like this one it's uh, got a little bits of like peachy pink type in it and then I have one that's called the my mini dream palette but which peculiarly looks like the I Need a Nude palette. It really doesn't look much like the, the uh, my, my Dream palette at all. And so this is really just neutral browns and I think this is also very nice. And then there is one that is a, a bronze palette uh, that's just the mini bronze palette. So this is more warmer tones. And then for Christmas they had this uh, baby bronze palette which uh, it's really sort of the same colors as in this mini bronze palette so I I'm not sure if this is even available anymore it might be on the website but I have had really good luck with all four of these little palettes and they are reasonably priced I think they're less than thirty dollars and uh, it's such a nice formula and it goes on so nice and these these color uh, combinations are so pretty that I have really become a big fan and then I guess I will bring up uh, the product that I think was the product of the entire year of 2023, which is the I Need a Nude palette from Natasha Denona, and I do have this one. And I do really, really like it. Now, there are three shades in this that do have aluminum powder. There's three shades on this top row up here that I just don't use. I know that those are the shimmer shades, so I just haven't been using those at all. But in terms of the rest of the colors in here, I do think that it, they go on really easily and create a really nice, pretty look. And that is actually what I put on my eyes today when I got this palette out. And I think that, um, you know, even if you think that you're never gonna use those three uh, shadows on the top if you are reactive to aluminum powder as I am. I still think that I'm getting my money's worth from this palette just because it's the colors, the other colors are so pretty and interesting looking, but uh, flexible and wearable. And so now that I have become a eyeshadow fan of D Natasha Denona, then I guess I had to pick up this new palette, which is called the Hyper Natural Face Palette. This one is uh, supposed to be clean beauty. It doesn't have any talc in it. It doesn't have any problematic ingredients in it. I actually think the ingredient list looks very good. Uh, it is supposed to, I think, be a palette that you can just use sort of on the go without putting any effort into it. And so it has five different eyeshadows and these are eyeshadows that you can put on with your fingers and then it has a powder bronzer with uh, three different colors in it and a powder blush with two different colors in it i am not quite sure i'm understanding the, these two items at the top i think if i were doing a palette like this i would do a one or two shades of a cream blush or a powder blush that I could put on with my fingers the way that I can put on the house labs blush with my fingers whereas this one I really feel like I need a, bl a brush and then I feel like what's the purpose of having these two different colors if I'm going to put a brush in here because I'm not really going to be able to just pick up one of those colors and I feel like that's even more the case for this bronzer so I 
I'm not sure I'm in agreement with their decisions in terms of what to put in the palette. And for that reason, I haven't gotten all that much use out of this palette. But I will say that these are very nice eyeshadow shades at the bottom. I think they're mostly supposed to be one and done shades and that is how I've been using them. And I have liked it for that reason. And I, it's not that there's anything wrong with that bronzer or that blush. It's just that I think they could have used that space better. But I think that I still need to do a video on this, so I will do that soon. Now, Necessary is one of my favorite companies, and I have tried almost everything that they make, and I have liked almost everything that they make. But in terms of the products that I actually consider to be my favorites in category and that I've used on a regular basis, those have included the uh, regular body serum, which I mix with moisturizer to give it more of a hydrating type of a feeling. And I really like the, um, the neck serum. I think that's actually a really interesting product and I think that there may be something to that in terms of that being helpful. I really like the uh, deodorant and I like the uh, lubricant, the sex gel. And uh, there's a new product that is out that is the rosemary shampoo and conditioner. And this is supposed to be good for hair loss. And I feel like my hair has been getting thinner in terms of the amount of part that I have um, for a while now. And then I had uh, COVID for about a month last fall. And I think that I lost some more hair as a result of that. And in theory, you should be able to get it back, but I don't know if I will. So I think that it's time for me to try this uh, Necessaire uh, new shampoo and conditioner and see if it makes a difference. Some people say rosemary oil does not make any difference with regard to that, but I'm willing to give that a chance anyway. Now, Pat McGrath, I don't know that Sephora is the best place to buy things from Pat McGrath because Pat McGrath tends to have really good sales on their own websites that are, are very, very frequent. So if they're not having a sale now, then just wait a day or two and probably the things will go on sale. But nonetheless, I really do like some of their products very, very much. So one thing that I know that I like a lot is this Satin Allure lipstick. I know that people don't like this case and think that the case is cheap, but I think that the lipstick that's in the case is really terrific for me. And I, I could like this lipstick more actually. And I talked about that in my lipstick video. I also really like this blush stick from Pat McGrath. Again, it's in a kind of a cheap plastic container, but the blush itself, it's actually really nice. And I also think that the Pat McGrath powder blush is very nice. Uh, it's very pretty in terms of the flower that's stamped onto the powder itself. And it's a nice heavy container and it comes in some really pretty colors. And so I do like that one, although it does have some talc in it. And then the eyeshadows from Pat McGrath. I find that I do better with the quads than I do with those motherships. The motherships tend to be very highly pigmented. The one palette that I uh, talked about recently on this channel was the Bronze Borealis one, which has, I think, three colors of different shades of like a gold or a bronze, and then there was one rose. And I think that one's super pretty, and it's a nice, like, festive, like, slightly glittery, but not too much over the top type of a quad. And as I suspected, it is now uh, much less expensive than it was just like a month ago. And the price is now down to $43 on the Pat McGrath website. And it might be the case if you wait for one of their site-wide sales that, that you'll, the price will go down even more. And I think that it's a little bit strange for Pat McGrath to have re-released the same palette without making any changes in it. But I think that's actually a really pretty color story. And I, uh, I really enjoyed that one in particular. But I think what I will do here is to just put a list of the Pat McGrath eyeshadow palettes that uh, do not include aluminum powder. Now, they, they might include talc, but none of the ones that I'm listing here include either um, aluminum powder or Teflon, which are both things that are in some of the older Pat McGrath palettes. And I think that if you have, uh, if you can tolerate a stronger color story, if you have darker skin or like a dark, darker eyeshadow look, that uh, the motherships could be really good. But some of these palettes might be worth taking a look at regardless of your skin tone.
And then what I'm planning to buy from Pat McGrath is that they have a new under eye powder that is pink and I'm trying to collect a bunch of different pink powders and then do a video on that and maybe just do a whole video on just powders because I've very rarely seen anybody do a good video on powders and I do have some opinions now. So I'm going to pick up that Pat McGrath pink powder. Now Rare Beauty, I think that the Rare Beauty uh, shimmery blushes, that those are probably the biggest uh, release for this Sephora sale. I think those are way too shimmery for me and from the videos that I've been watching for other people, I think that they look like they are really emphasizing texture and that I really don't need something that's shimmery. And, and you know, I'm a fan of the, like the RMS blushes, which are just slightly shimmery, but I don't think I need all that shimmer in a, a blush that's going a little too far as far as I can tell from the footage. So I'll go experiment with that at the Sephora store, but I'm not really thinking that that's something I'm going to review unless people tell me they really, really want me to. And in general, I feel like Rare Beauty, uh, that their products are not very expensive, and I think that maybe for the price they're not bad quality, but that I haven't been all that impressed with them compared to the kinds of products that I usually like. However, I do see on the website that there is a one blush, and this is the Soft Pinch Liquid Blush, and it is available in the color Hope, which is a nude mauve, and that it is only $14. And then if you took off three more dollars for the 20%, that would be less than drugstore prices. And that's a very highly pigmented blush. And I actually do have that blush and it's actually worked really nicely on me. I think that most of those soft pinch liquid blushes are very, 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 very pigmented. But in this case, I actually did like this product. I thought it blended in very nicely. And so I think that uh, that's actually a good buy. I think that that is definitely worth snapping up if it is still there when uh, the Sephora sale is open to you. Now, I have said for a while that this Rose Incorporated Skin Enhanced Luminous Tinted Serum is one of my favorite foundations. That's still the case. I think it's very similar to the Chanel one with these little balls of pigment in it, except that this one doesn't have any fragrance in it. And I feel like this has been a very nice foundation for me. Unfortunately, on the Sephora website, it only seems to be available in darker shades. So I wonder if they're planning to discontinue it. And I also kind of wonder if Rose Incorporated is going to continue to be with us, uh, which is too bad because I really do like this foundation and I, I would like to be able to continue to wear it. Uh, now that I am looking again at uh, SPF foundations, I really think that the Say Slip Tint is one of the best of those. I think that it feels okay on my skin. It really hasn't been irritating. It doesn't have uh, nano zinc in it. It doesn't have uh, very much pigment in it, so it goes on pretty thin. But I think it's been a, a perfectly fine uh, foundation and I don't feel like it's a bad thing if I put on a little bit extra because there's not that much tint to it. So I think that of the SPF foundations that are out there, I do really like that one. Other than that, I don't know that I'm that much of a fan of Say. The only other thing that I really feel uh, really enthusiastic about are these brushes. They have three different brushes, and I find myself reaching for these brushes quite frequently, and they're not too expensive. So I have been impressed with that. Um, but other than that, you know, some of the other makeup products by Say are okay, but I uh, wouldn't list them as being my favorite makeup products that are sold at Sephora. There's a new line of skincare at Sephora, which is called Shawnee Darden. And a couple of weeks ago, I purchased a, a little kit of some sort of mini type things from the Shawnee Darden website. So I haven't gotten around to trying that yet, but I do want to. And the Sephora collection, I really have not had good experiences with any of the makeup from the Sephora collection, but I do really like their brushes, and I have a, quite a few of their brushes now, and I do think that they perform well, and I'm talking about uh, the Sephora Collection Pro brushes. 
So for instance, this is their bronzer brush, and I actually do really like this a lot, and I've used this quite frequently. In fragrances, the only fragrance from uh, Sephora that I like is the Seven Virtues line, and I used to think that all of those were acceptable because they used to all be based on natural fragrances. I don't think that their two most recent releases, which are Cherry Ambition and Amber Vanilla, I think that those both have synthetic fragrances in them. But the fragrance from them that I really, really like is the Vanilla Woods one, which is just vanilla extract and nothing else, they tell me. And I also kind of like the Coconut Sun one, which has uh, also a lot of vanilla in it, but also a, a few other spicy type notes, and it smells a little bit like a coconut cookie. And then I, some of the other older fragrances I like also, and it's kind of sad that they are uh, now moving towards uh, synthetic fragrances because I'm not interested in those at all. I, they all smell awful to me. The Outset is a skincare brand uh, that is one of my very favorites. The a whole idea of this brand is that it is the kind of skincare that you can be sure is not going to be causing your skin irritation. So when your skin gets all messed up from using too many different things, then you can go back to this kind of product and you can be fairly assured that it's not going to be causing you further irritation and get your skin back into balance. And I think that's actually a really fascinating concept and that is some, exactly how I use it. I do use this fairly frequently even when my skin's not messed up, but I do absolutely agree that that is what these products will do for me, is that they're very reliable, that they're going to be uh, super clean and not going to cause my skin irritation. And it's my understanding that Scarlett Johansson actually developed these products on her own, that she was really, her skin was in very bad shape and that she didn't always do very well when she went to dermatologists or makeup artists. And so she put a lot of effort into figuring out what kinds of ingredients would work for her and what kinds of ingredients could work for other people. And that that is why she launched this skincare line because she would already put all that work into it. So I have uh, had nothing but good experiences with all of these Outset products. The one that I have used the most is um, the Outset Nourishing Squalane Daily Moisturizer. I use this quite frequently. And when I take a foundation and I thin it down a little bit to make it into more of like a tinted moisturizer, I have always used this one. And so far, this has worked really great. So I have been a big fan of this and I've bought several bottles of it so far and I will continue to purchase this one. This is a cleanser and this is not a cleanser I use so much in the winter. Uh, in the winter I do better I think when I use like a cream cleanser. But during the summer months when my face is feeling kind of sweaty, uh, then I think this, this works really well. And I really think that regardless of what your skin type is, that this would probably be a good cleanser for anyone. And I'm, I'm really impressed with it. And unlike most cleansers that I think are designed for people that uh, might have oilier skin than I do, this one does not have any ingredients in it that I know will irritate my skin. So I feel really good about this one. I've this is my second bottle, I think, and I'll probably continue to buy this one. And then they have a collagen serum, which is like a hydrating type of a serum uh, that's moisturizing, and that one does feel good on my skin as well. And in terms of oils, you know, usually I don't necessarily feel like I need to spend a lot of money on oils when I can get them from a, an essential oil company for like one-fifth the price that a lot of companies charge. But I think that this is actually a very nice oil. It's uh, very thin. I think that it uh, absorbs very fast into the skin. It's not greasy. And I think that the combination of ingredients in it is very good. And I've gotten some good use out of this as well. And then they have a few other products that I also like, so I don't feel like I would go wrong by buying anything from them just uh, without ever having tried it. The other thing that I will say is that I did a video on the Outset uh, about a year ago, and I focused most of the video just on that particular product line. And I actually got a, a comment from the marketing person from that company who told me that Scarlett Johansson and uh, their president of their company had uh, both sat around and watched several of my videos. So I was really flattered by that. And I never managed to actually get back in touch with those people again, but I thought that was really nice of them to reach out to me for that. So I'm really uh, glad that they uh, 
had a chance to look at the video and know that there are some people out there that really do appreciate these products. So the next is Tom Ford, and this will be really fast. I don't think that there is anything that Tom Ford makes that does not have one of the ingredients that I cannot tolerate. So almost all of them have either fragrance or aluminum powder or Teflon in it. And so therefore that's good, I guess, because uh, Tom Ford products are all really, really expensive and I really couldn't afford them anyway. So uh, the one product that I really do like and that I think I'm going to have to rebuy at this Sephora sale is this Tom Ford Traceless uh, Concealer Stick. And uh, this has been a really terrific concealer for me. And I I did a video on this uh, about a year ago, and I still have a little bit left in there, and I've used it pretty frequently. So it was not as bad of a deal as I thought it was going to be in terms of cost per use. I have reached for this a lot, and I think that this is probably my favorite concealer. I also do like the Merit one. I like the Jones Road little sticks. I kind of like the Bobbi Brown stick, but this is a really nice concealer, and I... I wouldn't mind using this every day for the rest of my life, so probably I'll buy another one in these, this sale. And then Westman Atelier. So I used to really, really like Westman Atelier and think that it was a terrific brand for me, but that everything was just really, really expensive and that maybe most people were willing to pay that amount of money for the containers and that I didn't care that much about the containers but that at least I felt okay when I purchased a Westman Atelier that the product was not going to be problematic for me and that I was going to be able to get to enjoy it rather than having it irritate my skin. That is not the case anymore. I don't think that Westman Atelier is focusing nearly enough in terms of uh, the people with sensitive skin and people that are going to have problems with the things that they're putting in their newer products. So that's been a disappointment for me. Now the products that I really like from Westman Atelier still, I really do like their blush sticks. I think that they're not the most long lasting blush sticks that I have used, but the colors are so pretty and they look so pretty when they're on my skin that I have really became really a fan of those. And I have, I think, all of the colors of these except for one. Now this is one of those products that is quite expensive in large part because of this fancy container but that uh, right now they have a little mini version of it uh, in the petal shade, and that's actually a really pretty shade. And so that could be worth considering uh, just as a little uh, exposure to the Westman Atelier blush formula, which I think is a very nice formula. I also really like these lit up highlighting sticks. So this is a kind of a balmy formula that I think almost gives me the same sort of a balmy, uh, glassy type look on my skin that I would be hoping for, for from, for instance, the Jones Road Miracle Balm, but it uh, doesn't have that same greasiness to it. This is much uh, more pleasant to put on my skin, and I did put on a little bit of this today. And this is a product that I really enjoy wearing an awfully lot. And this color, uh, the color that is called uh, Nectar, this is available in this little mini version, and so that's the same price, I think, as those blush. And I think that, again, this is just a fun little product that's not too expensive. And you do get plenty of that product in here, so I think that that could be worth considering, just to give it a try, maybe. Now, I am not a person that uh, is much into contouring, but there are, is one line of contour sticks from this uh, Westman Atelier. And I actually kind of like this product. Now, as a contour, if you, if you want to uh, contour your face, I think this is an excellent product to get. And for me, that would be the shade Biscuit. But they also have a shade that's darker and a little bit reddish that is supposed to work for people with darker skin. But what they have pointed out is that if you use that color, it will work really well as a bronzer for people people with lighter skin. And I think that that actually has worked nicely for me too, so I have used that from time to time. And this is fairly new, it's maybe six months old. This is called the I Want You Mascara. This is probably my favorite mascara, uh, partially because it's in the color brown, but also because I think that it's a uh, 
mascara that has functioned really, really well for me. It looks quite natural when I put it on. It goes on really easily. It doesn't cause any kind of mess at all. It comes off really easily. I don't know that it's exactly a tubing formula, but it really performs like a tubing formula in all the ways that matter to me and it hasn't irritated my eyes at all. Unfortunately, it's $45 and so I don't know that I I'm ever going to purchase it again because if I'm only going to use a mascara for a month or two, then that seems kind of like craziness. But what I hope with this is this is an early version of what other companies will be doing with mascaras and that what we will see, be seeing is more mascaras that are just like this one, but not quite so expensive, please. <laughs> now, another product that I really like are the super loaded tinted highlighters. And I feel like the ones that I have have been fine for me in terms of uh, not having a scent and being, uh, being attractive. And I think that these are really, really pretty products. Now they are very expensive. Uh, $75 is kind of crazy for any kind of makeup product. But I think that this is a very, very pretty product and I could put a little bit of this on. But what I fear is that Credo is now saying that these products have synthetic fragrance in them. And when I look at the Westman Atelier website, they don't even list the ingredients on there. So I don't know if this really has synthetic fragrance in the new versions, and I don't want to spend $75 to find out, especially since I already have all four of the shades without the fragrance in it, if they did change them. So I am not sure I can recommend this to other people, which is too bad because it's really one of my favorite makeup products of all of the ones that I have. And then YSL, I liked these eyeshadows enough to do a whole video on them. And I really think that these are my favorite powder eyeshadows. I like both of these color combinations and I think that I will continue to use these and I keep looking at the YSL website on occasion just to see if they've gotten any new colors in, which they haven't yet, but I'm keeping my fingers crossed. This is such a lovely formula to use. It's so soft and uh, it, it goes on really nicely and it looks really, really pretty. So I'm very happy with this particular purchase. And the most recent thing that YSL came out with were some uh, bronzers and they are I think just available on the Nordstrom website. And I actually did get two different colors of the YSL bronzers and two different colors of the Armani bronzers. So hopefully I can get a bronzer video put up soon because I think that uh, there's a lot of people that would like to see what these colors look like next to one another. It's very hard when they're not stocked in a store that you can go to. And then here is a list of some of the sunscreens from uh, Sephora that I am considering trying that do not have any chemical sunscreens or uh, sunscreen boosters in them. So if you have tried any of these sunscreens, then please let me know what you think of them because that may really have a big impact on whether or not I decide to buy some of these rather than others. So thank you very much for watching all the way to the end of the video. And if you have tried any of the products that I brought up, then please let me know what you think of them, especially if you did not do well with the things that I like, then I definitely wanna know about that. And also, if there are any products from Sephora that are your favorites that I did not bring up, then please let us know about that so we can share information with one another. And uh, if you haven't subscribed yet to the channel, then please do that. And thank you very much for watching, Coco and I. Love you very much. Goodbye. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Dun, 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 dun,